first one is about the order of operations, just which order we do each thing in. And notice I put our order of operations because this is just, just the one that we've agreed to use. So that's parentheses, exponents, multipli multiplication and division are equal. We do it from left to right. The division is first. Do that first left, from left to right. And then addition, subtraction, same idea there. And so according to that order of operations that we're going to use, which comes first? What, what's the first thing we do? Do the parentheses, right? There's some parentheses, so we should evaluate inside the parentheses if possible. Is it possible to combine what's inside the parentheses? Sure, they're just numbers. We can uh, subtract numbers. So 6 minus 3.5 is... 2.5, 12, still, there's, there's parentheses is still needed. There's still something acting on the parentheses. And what's next? Yep. Exponents, right? So we do 2.5 times 2.5, okay? So uh, I think to this point, 95% population is with us. Um, Sometimes, though, uh, people will want to multiply 12 times 2.5 first and then square. Um, especially if this 2.5 isn't a number 2.5, it's like x. Okay? A lot of times when it's x or y or something like that, uh, it seems different. Uh, and you want to apply the square to the 12 as well. The square is only for 2.5, and that's only because that's how we agreed to write it down. If I write it like that, and I put a number, and a little number above it, then I mean just this number times itself. So 12 times 2.5 times 2.5 is what? Right, so far we've done uh, parentheses, we did exponents just now, we're on to multiplication, you know, we got a choice between multiplication and subtraction, and here's multiplication, so what's 12 times 6.25? 75. Yes? 75. 75. Minus 1.5 is left, and then we subtract 1.5, so we get 73.5. Any questions? Uh, how do we multiply fractions? We're multiplying here, right? Yeah? Straight across. Okay, so that's one thing. We know we don't multiply, you know, cross multiply. That doesn't apply here. That's not what that's for. Um, before we multiply straight across, is there anything we can do? Yeah? Okay, cross simplify, cross cancel. Uh, all of these are going to multiply together anyway. They're all going to become these two like more massive numbers, one over the other. Uh, and then we're going to look for common factors. So why don't we just go back here? They're already broken down into smaller factors and see if there's common factors uh, before we put them all together. So what do you see? Any common factors? Okay. Four and eight, share factor of eight. So this becomes a 2, this becomes a 1, dividing them both by the same common factor. Anything else? Yeah? 3 and 9. 3 and 9. 3 and 9 have the common factor of 3, so 3 and 1. Uh, another option, 3 and 3, also common factor of 3. Okay. This is getting easier. Um, so what, what are we going to get in the numerator? It's what? 2. 1 times 1 times 2. 2. Okay. And 1 times 3 times 3 is 9. Are we done? Why not? How do we know? It's technically quickly, so it's going to be negative. Because negative times negative is positive. Yeah, okay, so negative times negative is positive. Times another negative gives you the overall negative. Negative 2 ninths. 
And if we did it right and we cancel out all the common factors before we multiply them together, then we won't have to simplify at the, the last step. So now we're down to 33. Let's multiply these together, finding the product, but there's a variable in there. And let's see if we don't have any left. So we multiply together first. Is there only one choice of what you can multiply together first? Jada? Sure, you can do negative 10 times 4. Could you do negative 1 fifth times 10? Or negative 1 fifth times negative 10? Yes. Uh, you could even do negative 10 times negative 5c because this is all multiplication all the way across. We have the properties of associative, uh, of associativity, and commutativity. We can change the order, we can flip these around, we can do these first, and then that, whatever we want. It's all multiplication. Okay, so we're going to do negative 10 times 4. Okay. So that means that we'll get negative 1 fifth times negative 40 times negative 5c. What next? It's, it's up to you. Anything will do. Data. 1 fifth times negative 40. 1 fifth times negative 40. So negative 1 fifth times negative 40. What does that mean, 1 fifth times? Or what will you get when you multiply the one fifth? Caleb? Put a one underneath, put 40 over one, and now it looks like we're multiplying fractions, which it is what we're doing, okay? And now we have the same situation as over here. We could uh, cross cancel, right? We cancel five to 40. Yeah, five and 40 have a common factor of five, this is one, so it becomes eight. Okay, so we multiply one by one, if we multiply 40 by one fifth, okay, I'm kind of leaving out the negative sign when I talk about it, but when you multiply 40 by one fifth, you're really dividing 40 by five. 40 divided by five is eight. Um, but that way it's exactly the same thing. So we get uh, negative one times eight, negative one times negative eight, and we'll get eight, positive eight, over one, okay? So eight times negative five C, Property. What does that mean? What are we? What are we going to do in this problem? That is the distributive property. Danielle. Uh huh. Take negative w. Multiply by two w and seven. Multiply by two w and seven. Okay. So here we go. Uh, what do you get when you multiply negative w times positive negative w times positive two w? To the second. Two w to the second power. When you multiply a w times a w, w times w, well that's just the w times itself, and the shorthand for that is w with a two in the superscript up here. That means multiply w by itself. And that's what we did, and so we write a shorthand like that. And negative w times seven is gonna be negative seven w. Can we put these together? No, why? This is a w to the second, this is a w to the first. They are both w, so it's close, but they don't have the same power, so you can't combine them. They're not what's called like terms. They're not alike. So again, we come over here. What's the first thing we'll do in this expression? What's that? Seven times w. Seven times w, so we get seven w. Then what? Seven times negative five, so we're doing the distributive property. Negative 35 plus three w. Almost done, except like like terms. 7w and 3w are, like, are, are like terms, so we have 10w minus 35. And, uh, any questions from the quiz? Quiz questions? Any questions from other homework problems? 
woman problem or something he's confused about at all. Give me a few more seconds. Okay, looks good, looks like we're good. So we'll pass it on over. Sit, 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 everybody sit. Just pass it in, it doesn't have a staple. We'll deal with it. If you don't have a pink slip, you should have had a pink slip when you walked in. Question came from these two problems. So the question was asked, why can you why can you multiply two things together that aren't like terms, but you can't add? You can multiply them together, but you cannot. Uh, Which ones are we trying to, which, is this the problem that confused you? Because we did combine like terms here. But we can't add the 35? Yeah. That's the problem? That's confusing. So if you were to put this together, um, what would you get? Like negative 25? No, you can't. You can't put uh, 10w minus 35 and like get negative 25w. You can't do that. Okay, but you're confused about that. Well, no, it makes sense. Oh, it does make sense. Okay. Um, if it if it doesn't make sense to somebody in the room, I'll go ahead and uh, explain this. Okay. Um, it it, it kind of comes down to what we're calling a term. We're talking about like terms, and so we should talk about what a term is. So a term, pretty much anything separated by addition and subtraction. Okay. So if you got 
a group of things like this, like 10 and W, that's what we call a term. We call this a term and this is a term. Um, so we can call 35 a term and we're subtracting that term and here's a term here as well. Okay. So these are our terms and some of them are like and some of them are not. Um, terms are made up, especially when we are looking at ones with variables in them, is made up of a coefficient. Okay, we talked about coefficients or we didn't. Coefficients. Coefficients are just those numbers that you're multiplying by a variable. So this is a coefficient, this 3 is a coefficient, this 7 is a coefficient. Anything you're multiplying by a, a variable is a coefficient. And the key to this is that 10 is being multiplied by w here. Okay? So there's, there's 10 groups of w's. Right? That's kind of what multiplication boils down to. 10 groups of this thing. So there's 10 w's. Okay? So if there's 10 w's, well, let's, let's go back to 7 w and 3 w. We'll get 10 w's. There's 7 w's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's 7 w's over there. They're grouped together. There's 7 of them. And over here, there's 3 more. They're just kind of hanging out. Okay? Uh, and they're just there. They just exist in the same place. And when we add them, we're just really grouping them together and seeing how many there are. Okay? By way back to the days of you have five apples, and if I give you two apples, and how many apples do you have? And that was the, the way we learned addition, right? Back in the first, first grade, second grade, kindergarten maybe. They're all the same thing, so we can group them, we can sweep them together into one big pile and say we have 10 of them. There's 10 of those W's. That's what makes them like terms. They just, they are the same thing. Um, so the reason why we can't, <laughs> say, put together, uh, look at 2x plus 3y, uh, for, for one thing, 3x plus 2y, or 2x plus 3y. You can't put those together. They're not the same thing. If I were to write 2x is here, and 3y uh, is here, you can't put them together and say you have 5 something. Five x y's? No, some of them are x's and some of them are y's. You don't put them together. There's no way to unify them. Okay, um, so that's one thing, a, a fairly obvious thing. But if we have x squared, it seems like maybe you should be able to put those together. Okay, but here's the the key thing: what does it mean to square a number? You square right? five squared. What does it mean, Jada? Times it by itself. Times it by itself. So you multiply x by itself. Okay. Um, this x isn't multiplied by another x, it's just x. And if we try to add them together using this operation of addition, like worlds are colliding here. We have multiplication of two x's and, well, just an x. Okay? And an x plus an x times another x, they don't, like those two worlds don't go together so well uh, in this case. When you try to take an x, and add an x times x. In this instance, maybe you'd be tempted to do 5x to the third or something and just add the exponents. And then you gotta think about what that means, x to the third. <laughs> x to the third means x times x times x. If you add an x plus an x times an x, it's not the same thing as taking an x and multiplying it by an x times an x. x times x times x would be x to the third. But x plus an x times an x is their, their exponents, they don't have anything to do with it, they can't combine together because they're just two different things. We talked about um, how, let's say I call that length x, right? Is that okay to call length x? Just say it's a variable. We don't know how long it is, right? This could be one inch or this could be, you know, this could span the distance of our Milky Way, right? You could put anything in that distance. So that distance is just x. So we take this distance x and another distance x and we make a square that has x here and x there. What's the, the area of this square? Well, if I do x plus x, I'm just kind of adding up lengths. So what's the area of this square? x times x, length times width. X 
squared. I try to put these together, they just don't mesh. They're not the same thing. This is a, a length and this is an area. They're totally different animals. Okay? And there's ways to play with them and put them together in some ways. But to add them together, to try to say that this 1x plus this 1x squared is 2 of something, it just doesn't gel. All right? So the answer is you can't combine things with addition that aren't like terms because it just violates all the rules that we've made within mathematics. We've said that addition works this way, and multiplication works this way, and combining the addition and multiplication in that sense <coughs> just doesn't work. This length plus this square doesn't work. This x plus this x times x doesn't work. They're different things. So just like you wouldn't try to put apples with oranges, two apples plus five oranges, it's not seven of a, of a thing. To say it's seven fruit would be the same to say uh, that uh, this is five things, or five terms, or five numbers. It's not really specific enough that we would be able to work with it. All right. Does that clear anything up for anybody? The analogy and stuff. Okay. Uh, and, and just when we multiply, we're just saying we have eight groups of negative five of these. We get five groups of C, and then we have eight groups of that, and we can just multiply numbers together all day long. Okay, so um, you can see over there at the top left of that board, we're going to be learning some things. Okay, um, we're going to divide by fractions, divided by fractions before, we're just going to reiterate it. Okay, so if you didn't catch it the first time, we'll go over it quickly again. Um, we're going to simplify what I uh, dubbed an algebraic quotient. That's where you have. Um, uh, variables up in the numerator, and you're dividing by a, an integer, most likely. So dividing by an integer with uh, a numerator that has variables in it. We're going to look at can you divide by zero? You probably know that you can't. And if we have time, we're going to watch a video that, that uh, explains really well why you can't. Because it <coughs> violates all of the things that we have built up until the point that we try to divide by zero. Um, we're going to talk about square roots. We're going to define a square root. Uh, we're going to estimate square roots and evaluate perfect squares. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to evaluate perfect squares. Uh, we have vocab here, radicand and rational number that will come up with square roots. So let's start with 2.6. you want to follow along in your books, that's where we are. I guess we can put the subgo cap too. We're going to talk about something called a multiplicative inverse. Not a very difficult concept. Okay? Multiplic multiplicative inverse is a number. Okay? Each number has its own multiplicative inverse. So. The multiplicative inverse of 8 is the number, there's only one, that you can multiply 8 by to get a positive 1. And so what is that number? Let's ask it that way. What can you divide 8 by to get 1? Danielle? Yeah. 8. Divide by 8, okay. Divide by 8, we can get 1. All right. Well, <laughs> dividing by a number, any number, we'll, we'll use it with fractions, but any number, because any number can be written as a fraction, really. You write this as 8 divided by 8 over 1. And uh, do we remember this? How do we divide by a fraction? Multiply by what? 
the reciprocal. If we want to divide by 8 over 1 and multiply by the reciprocal, the reciprocal of 8 over 1 would be 1 over 8. So we multiply by 8 times 1 eighth. 1 eighth of 8 is 1. So what's multiplic multiplicative inverse of 3? What is it? 1 over 3. And what's the uh, multiplicative inverse of 3 fourths? 4 thirds equals 1. And how about negative 2 sevenths? Negative 7 over 2. We need to wind up with a positive 1. That's why we multiply by a negative. So the multiplicative inverse is really just the reciprocal of that number. <coughs> the multiplicative inverse of 3 is 1 third. The multiplicative inverse of 1 third is 3. So it's one place. Each number has one and only one multiplicative inverse. So what's the multiplicative inverse, inverse of A? Is what? 1 over A. Whatever A is, whether it's positive or it's negative, or even if it's a fraction, this idea works. 1 over A. So now we have a definition of division, and that is to divide by a number is to multiply by its multiplicative inverse or to multiply by its reciprocal. Multiplicative inverse, reciprocal, uh, really the same thing. So in the same way, the, the same rules about the sign of uh, of a new number for division is the same as multiplication. So the same way that a negative, a negative times a negative is positive, and a positive times a negative is a negative, and obviously a positive times a positive for a while now has been positive. So in the same way, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, and a negative divided by a positive is a negative, positive divided by positive is positive, and negative divided by negative is positive. Because we find out that division is really just multiplication by the reciprocal. So, are there any questions, anything? I'm, I was a little surprised to find out we, we didn't know 8 times 1, 8 is 1, and that might be that we didn't know it, or we just didn't want to step out there and guess. But are there any questions, Jada? Oh, you're just doing, oh, agreeing? That's your agree? Okay. Um, so are there any questions so far? Sign of a quotient? Division is multiplication by what? The reciprocal. You divide by something, you're really multiplying by the reciprocal. Which is really great when you're actually dividing by a fraction. If you're dividing something by 8, it's probably not easier to multiply by what? We use it when it's convenient for us. Um, so. Alright, so. Uh, one instance where we use the where we use division, talking about division here, is to calculate something called the mean. And now the mean that we're talking about is something called the arithmetic mean. There's a geometric mean. And we're going to talk about the arithmetic mean. And what people often call the arithmetic mean is the average. They'll see the arithmetic mean and they'll say the average, and they say what's the average? Is. Average really is a broad term. It can mean a lot of things. A very common average that we find is the arithmetic mean. Okay. So if I wanted to find the average of a set of data, 2, 7, 3, 10, and 6, okay. I want to 
to find the mean, or what people often think of as the average. How do we find the average, or the mean, the mean numbers? Yes? We add them all up, and we divide by how many numbers there are. We, we divide by how many numbers there are. So, now the book just calls this the mean, but I'm going to further define it as the arithmetic mean. Add all the numbers. <coughs> Divide by uh, how many numbers there are. Right. So if you add all these together, uh, let's see, we got 10, and there's another 10. And Divided by, by five. Twenty-eight divided by five. About how much is it going to be before you even calculate? It? About how much is it going to be? I think it's close to six, but definitely bigger than five. Uh, and um, why do you think it's closer to six? Closer to six than five. Right. You don't want to justify it at all? Okay. So, what, how could this come out to be five? What would have to change for this to come out to be five? You'd have to change 28 to 25. 28 to 25. 25 divided by 5 would be five. Okay. And then what would we have to change for it to be six? 30 divided by 5. And what's 28 closer to? Closer to 30. So it's probably going to be close to six, five point, something bigger than five and a half. So what is it? What? Five point six. Five point six. Or twenty-eight fifths is perfectly fine as well. So let's see if we can do this on our own. Let's find the arithmetic mean uh, in number twenty-five. 25 times the arithmetic mean. Or what you might be calling the average. So it's 2.6. Number 25. Page 106. Let's say I were to use a calculator like this, and I approach this problem this way, 12 uh, minus 8 minus 9, right? 12 plus negative 8 plus negative 9, and then I divide by 3, 
do you think that's going to go? Cameron? It's going to go head shakes. Your head's going to shake as soon as you enter. No. Why is it going to go wrong? Because you have to add the numbers first. Hmm. You have to add 12 um, plus negative 8 plus negative 9. Uh -huh. And then get the answer. And then divide that by 3. Okay, so let me just clarify. Uh, I'm on the same page as you. Am I, am I doing 12 plus negative 8 plus negative 9? No, you're doing 12 minus 8 minus 9. Is that different? <coughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Let's look at a number line. If we, or a number line, let me say this is 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, what does it look like? So at 12, what does it look like to add negative 8? Like if we're just moving around on the number line, which way would we go? Go left. Yeah. So you'll go left uh, an amount of eight, eight steps that way. Okay. So that's twelve plus negative eight. Right. Twelve plus negative eight. What would it look like if I did twelve minus eight? I start at twelve. I think we agree on that, right? And where would we go from there? Go to the left. So does it look different to add negative 8 or to subtract 8? It looks the same. Okay, so it's good to have that clarified. So um, we do have 12, or the equivalent of 12 plus negative 8 plus negative 9. Okay, and then we're supposed to get the answer and then divide it by 3. Well, it's going to get that answer. Right? It's going to do the subtraction. It's going to divide by 3. So that's just going to give it give us what we want or not. Why? Yes? Why or why not? No. Because why? Because uh, you got to go 12 plus 8 plus, no wait, 12 plus negative 8 plus uh, negative 9. Uh, and then from there, you would get a number, and then you divide that by 3. Okay. So you have to get the, the result of 12 minus 8 minus 9, right? To get that sum difference, however you want to think. Okay. Is the calculator not going to do that? I mean, if I, I'm putting that in here. Find 12 minus 8 minus 9, divide by 3. That's what I'm, that's what I put in here. Yeah? Well, because calculators do like the multiplication first, or the division. Yeah, it will. It will do this division first because it follows our order of operations that we use, okay? Uh, which would mean, uh, 9 divided by 3, get that answer first, okay, that's the new number there, and then do 12 minus 8, and then subtract, well, that'll be 3. So we'll just do 12 minus 8 minus 3, okay, and it'll give you 1. That's not right. So let me, let me go back, bring that back up. Uh, nope, I don't want that. This. Um, so I have to get this first. I have to force the calculator to get this first. And I'm, I'm forcing us all to do this in one line of commands and rather than enter and enter and enter. Okay. So how can I force the calculator to first calculate these numbers and then divide the result by 3? Yeah, parentheses. It, it wants to use the same syntax as you use. Okay. Syntax is just a way of, of uh, kind of like grammar. Syntax is grammar as well, um, in a way. So 12 minus 8 minus 9, in parentheses, find that. Can't break outside the parentheses. It knows to follow that order of operations. Not because it's right, but because the guy who made the calculator, the group who made the calculator, Ross Perot and his people, put that structure in there. They're saying you've got to use parentheses first, and then exponents and so on. It's going to follow that order. So can I trust that this is the right answer? What's the problem, though, in this class? What do I ask for in your answer? One, two, is this exactly right? What, what, how could I write it exactly right in my answer? You do uh, negative 1.6 with a repeated sign. OK. Good enough. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, if you, we didn't exactly start with fractions, and so if we end with a decimal answer, that's all right. And if you are exact to say, uh, to communicate that six is going to repeat, so that's that's good enough. Negative one 
0.6 and a line for repeating. Or if you want, you can do fractions. I would prefer fractions. What fraction is 0.6 repeating equal to? What? So that's certainly a way to go. Yeah, negative one and six tenths. Negative one and well, you know what? No, we can't do that, can we? Is that point six exactly? No, it's not point six exactly. We can't do six tenths. It's not a bad idea. <coughs> what is point three repeating? Point three forever. What fraction is that? Well, what's the 3 over 1? 3 divided by 1 is just 3, so it must be 10 over 3. If you're right, and it's one of those two, and you are right, it is 1 third. Okay, point 3 repeating is 1 third. Okay, can we add another point 3 repeating? Can we? Can we? I mean, you can add them just together, can't you? Point 3. What's point 3 plus point 3? Every 3 gets added to another 3 forever and ever and ever. We're going to get 0.6 repeating. Well, in the fractions, we must have added a third plus a third, so this must be. A third plus a third is two thirds. So it's just two of those. They have a common denominator, so we can add them together. Two thirds. So this is negative one and two thirds. Just uh, uh, diverge, I guess, because we're we're on the cusp of something really really cool. What is point nine 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 nine? You know, forever. Really, just I can write that. It's the same thing. Point nine repeating. So point nines forever. What is that equal to? Is it equal to one? Uh, round. I'm not saying let's, let's do this and round up. I'm saying we don't get 0.3 is 130 because we're rounding up. Right? It's just the decimal representation of 130. The things 0.999 forever is the same thing as 1. If you put 0.9s in for all eternity, you wrote down 9. Is that exactly the same as 1? Not exactly the same? You think it's really, really, really close? Yeah? Okay, well let's look at this. So we just added 0.3 repeating plus 0.3 repeating. And what did we get when we added 0.3 repeating plus 0.3 repeating? What? Two three. Oh, let's uh I'm talking about what decibel did we get? We got 0.3333333 forever plus 0.3333333 forever. What did we get when you added those two together? We set on the right, and every three gets added to another three, so you get six, 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 six. So point 0.6 repeating forever. Okay? And point 0.3 is the same as one third, and point 0.3 forever is also equal to one third. And so let's add another point 0.3 forever. Point 0.3333333. Three, 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 three. Okay. What do we get on the decimals? What do we get when we add these threes together? Three plus three plus three. Three plus three plus three. Three. Jada. Point nine repeating. Point nine repeating. Here. This is also one third. So we get point nine 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 forever and ever and ever. Over here, what do we get? One third plus one third plus one third, what's that? That's a, that's a whole, right? A third plus a third, that's three thirds, that's one. So what do we find out? The point on repeating forever for all eternity is equal to one. You ready for that to go in your mind?
And it's not a trick. Sometimes there's these math things and they're tricks. It's true. 0.9 repeating forever is equal to 1. And it's the same idea that 1 third can rep be represented by repeating 3s. 1 can be re represented by repeating 9s after the decimal. Anyway, we wasted enough time on that. That was just fun for me. And, and a few other people. All right, so we know about the arithmetic mean. Um, do you want to talk about, have you guys talked about mean, median, and mode? Talked about that before? Pretty common thing to talk about. Right? All those things are measures of what's called central tendency, which is really like averages. It's a different, all different ways of finding averages. So the mean, the arithmetic mean, is uh, one kind of central tendency. You know, what's coming up the most is kind of what we're trying to figure out. Um, now let's divide mm, 2 by uh, 2 fifths. I've already said this once today, but we're going to say it again, and we're going to remind ourselves that it's okay to do this, and do a couple examples, and then move on from there. So we divide 2 by 2 fifths. What do we, what's the same as dividing by 2 fifths? Divide by two fifths. We instead divide by a fraction. Yeah. Um, no, we're gonna avoid the, the temptation to turn des or fractions into decimals and then just let our calculator do it. We're gonna keep exact answers. You're probably right. Divide by fraction. We can, instead of dividing by that fraction. What's that, Danielle? Multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, thank you. Multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal. So this is 2 times 5 halves. That's 2 over 1 times 5 over 2. That's 2 cancels with the 2. That's 5. So once again, as I've shown you before, I'm going to justify this with uh, you know, following all the rules of math. We know that you can do this, but now we're going to justify. So in a fraction, this big fraction here, we can multiply by anything in the numerator and denominator as long as it's the same thing. Right? Multiply the numerator by 8 as long as we multiply the denominator by 8 and whatever numbers you want to pick. Because if we do that, we're really just multiplying, if we did, multiply by 8 over 8. We just be multiplying by 1. Multiplying a number by 8 over 8, which is 1, and so there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, 8 doesn't help us a lot. But we will multiply by, we'll multiply the denominator by its multiplicative inverse. What happens when you multiply something by its multiplicative inverse? What do you get? 1. You get 1. Multiplicative inverse, you get 1. So we do that in the numerator. Here we get 1, we cross cancel, and we just get exactly what we showed over here. 2 times 5 halves, the 2's cancel, we get 5. <coughs> so in your notes, do number 17.
Okay, so when they're written this way, they can be a little bit tricky. Uh, often we wonder which one do we flip over, which one is the reciprocal of which one? Okay. Um, well, hopefully you're seeing by this example that we want to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator because if we multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, a couple things, well, one main thing happens. The denominator gets canceled because you're multiplying the denominator by its reciprocal, which by definition would cause it to be one. If we have a denominator of one, then we don't need to write a denominator anymore. If it's over one, if you divide something by one, nothing changes, it's the same number. And then when you multiply by the reciprocal in the numerator, it does become uh, a simpler problem to do. To multiply by a fraction is easier, easier than dividing by a fraction. So if in doubt, write it so that you can see which one is the denominator. That's negative 1 half over 1 fifth. So we want to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, 5 over 1. And that's going to give us negative 5 halves. So 5 times 1, 5. 1 times 2, 2. Negative times positive, negative. Look at something like um, 24 over uh, 18. Let's simplify this fraction. So, whenever you have that simplified fraction, what is the simplified? Can't get any simpler than that. Danielle? We can simplify it even further. Four thirds. Okay. But in both instances, we're displaying exactly what I want us to pay attention to. Okay. How do we simplify it to 12 ninths? How does it become that? Divide both of them by two because they have. They, what do they have in common now? This word is very important, and I said this before. What do they have that's the same? Mm, that's another good question. Okay. If we divide them by 2, I guess what they have in common, we could say that they're both divisible by 2. We could say that. Which really comes down to they both have a factor of 2. right? They both have factors of 2. How can you prove that 24 has a factor of 2? How do you show that 2 is a factor of 24? Aside from dividing it by two, how do we show that it's a factor? Okay, it's an even number. Even numbers are divisible by two, so it's a property of even numbers. Okay, but the definition of, of what a factor is, like, prove to me that it's that you can't that two is a factor. How do we do that? Two times twelve is twenty-four. Uh, so yeah. Different, different ways to show it. We can say it's divisible by two. We can, show, we can say it's an even number. But what I'm trying to get at is when we say it's a factor, when two is a factor, anything's a factor, we're multiplying that factor by another factor to get the, to get the, the multiple, to get the product. Okay. And so the proof that 18, if two is a factor of 18, how do we prove that? Yeah. 
2 times 9 is 18. Okay. So we could rewrite this. What we have is 2 uh, times 12. Right? And in the denominator, we have uh, 2 times 9. They could break it apart like that, right? When we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. What's 2 divided by 2? It's 1. And now we're, those factors divide each other out. They divide each other to 1. And now we have 1 times 12 ninths. And just so we can simplify. But this is also 3 times 4 over 3 times 3. So again, we have common factors of 3. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. And we just have 4 thirds. So to simplify a fraction, what do we need? Let's do the two numbers in the numerator and denominator have to have in order to simplify them. Multiple, multiple is, uh, you know, 24 is a multiple of 2. Okay. So 2 is a what of 24? Right, so we have to have a common. We must have a common factor. Got to have that. This is so important. And, and People gloss over it so often and don't realize how important that word is and knowing exactly what factor means is so important, especially in algebra when we start throwing letters in there. Okay. So I'm going to reiterate it, whether you like it or you know you do. You okay. need a common factor, and a factor is what? How do we define a factor of a number? A number has factors. How do we define those factors? If this number has some factors, what's the justification for that? How do I know these are factors over here of this number? They multiply. Do they add? Is there addition? Is required for something to be a factor? Did I need to add anything to 2 times 12? If I added, let's say I did 2 times 12 plus 3, so I'll get 27. Is 2 a factor of 27? 2 is not a factor of 27. Is 12 a factor of 27? No, but I got it, right, with some numbers. Is 3 a factor of 27? Three is a factor of 27. Uh, it just works out. We could do, um, let's see. <laughs> well, that is a coincidence. That only happens because 12 is a factor of 3 as well. Or 12 is a multiple of 3. 3 is a factor of 12. Okay. Um, but is 3, here's the big question. Is 3 a factor of 12 because you added it to something else? Can I add 3 plus something and say the result, 3 is a factor of that? 3 plus 5 is 8, so 3 is a factor of 8? No. Okay, so addition is not what we're talking about. We're talking about strictly multiplication. If we're going to multiply one number by another, the answer that I get, the product that I get, those are factors of that number. Right? Strictly multiplication. All right. So I say all that, and I, I focus on this word factor, because then I want to ask you, how about x plus 2? Am I multiplying these together? So if I plugged a number for x and I added those together, whatever I got, these would not be factors of that number, right? right. So what, what we're seeing is not a factor of 2 and a factor of x, but x plus 2. Right? Just two numbers added together. They're not in the realm of factors. Okay? So if I divide this by 2, can I simplify that expression? I write something new, like a, a simpler fraction like I could in this example. Can I 
specifically what I'm trying to get at. Cross out these twos and maybe call it x plus 1. Can we do that? Hmm. Kind of a tough one. Kind of a tough question. And the answer is no. What can we cancel out? They have to have common what? Factors. Okay? So I crossed out a 2. All right? So to cross out a 2, to cancel out a 2, that 2 must have been a factor. But we just talked about it. Was 2 a factor of this number here? No, it was just a number that we added to another number. Which, you know, as we could talk about it, and we could, we could play around with it and combine these numbers and that kind of stuff. But it's not a factor, and that's the important thing. I can't divide this 2 by this 2. This 2 is being added to this x. Right? We have to do kind of like parentheses. We have to do the x plus the 2 before we could divide by that too. But if we let's just back it up, if we change it a little bit, and let's put 4x plus 2 over 2, now could we simplify it? How so? Four and two. So just cancel this four with this two. That would kind of be the same thing as before. We can't just cross out that. Could we cross out this 4 and this 2? Hmm, another hard one. The answer is, yeah, we could. But here's how we have to justify it. In order to cross it out, cross it out from the numerator and denominator, what does it have to be? If we're going to cross out a 2, it has to be a, a factor. A factor meaning, what does it, how do you define a factor? Just ignore him. He's got a peppery number. What? What does it mean to be a factor of something? What does it mean to be a factor? Does it mean that 2 is a factor of 16? It goes into 16. It goes into is kind of vague, so to be specific. Evenly. Evenly, yeah. True. But to really express it, we say 2. Bryce? Can be multiplied, two can be multiplied by eight to get 16, right? Which is what we mean when we say goes into evenly, because two multiplied by eight, we don't have a remainder. That's what it means to go in evenly. We don't have any remainder that we have to add on. Okay, so the question is, if we want to cancel a two from the numerator, the numerator has to have a factor of two, okay? So I'm gonna use distribution to show that it does have a factor of two, or actually like reverse distribution, okay? How about if I do 2 times 2x plus 1? What would you get if you distributed this 2? 4x plus 2. 4x plus 2. So I just like took the 2 out that what like is, is distributed through here. I undistributed it. I factored it out. So can I cancel this 2 with this 2? If I can, if I can cancel them out, it's because they are common factors. Okay, and a factor is a factor because you multiplied it by some other number. Okay, so this number is not specific. It's not forty-eight or it's not uh, sixty-four, or whatever. But it, it possibly could be because we're multiplying two by some number. Okay. Two strictly multiplied by some other number. We don't know what it specifically is because we haven't substituted x, but if we did put x in there, we would get two times some other number. So it's to a factor of this number, this number right here. That's what I'm at. Two is a factor of this numerator because two times some other number gives you the numerator. And so since two is a factor of the numerator and the denominator, we can two times two divided by one. We can cancel it out. Two divided by two is one. So. If we're going to cancel, let's say, a 2 with, with these guys here, uh, we're going to need to find a factor of 2 in here and here, and any other number that's added or subtracted in every term in the numerator. Um, so um, we'll work on 36. 
36 is the same idea. I'm trying to simplify this expression. So number 36, I'll write it up on the board. <coughs> this again, so I'll just leave this up with 36 below it. The most common thing I'm seeing, be just because your eyes draw to it right away, is you can see a six and another six, and just get this, and I think probably the natural uh, instinct would be to make that a negative P plus 15, okay? This can't do this. Okay. Let's go back to the, the previous uh, stuff here to talk about why. If you're going to simplify a fraction, you must have a common what? Factor. And remember, what does it mean to be a factor? To multiply. If you're a factor of something, you are getting multiplied by something, by, by one thing, whether it's a number or it's a collection of numbers in parentheses. Okay, but by one thing, you're getting multiplied by one thing to make whatever the result is. That means you're a factor. If you're getting multiplied by something else to make this thing, and by this thing I mean the numerator is six, multiplying by one thing, just multiplying by just one thing to make the numerator. Is it? Is six being multiplied by just one thing to make this numerator? Well, if it is, it's not very easy to see at the moment. 
And the answer is no, it's not. It's, I mean, there is a 6, it's a negative, negative 6, is multiplied by p, but then we're adding 15, okay? That's not the, the qualifications for being a factor. A factor is just multiplication. If you're a factor, you're being multiplied, just multiplied, by something. Right? You put that something in parentheses, but you're just multiplying. Well, it's not being multiplied by p and 15. We're not distributing it to p and 15. It's just being multiplied by p. If we're going to cancel something out, it needs to be a common factor. So let's back up. Is there a number that is a factor of the numerator and a factor of the denominator? Another way to look at it is, can we use distribution? Like a plus in there. Can we use distribution to distribute this factor across both of these terms so that this factor has a common factor with 6? So remember, we can multiply by two terms here get negative 6p plus 15, and that number also shares a factor of 6. Can we put 6 there? <coughs> put a 6, maybe put a negative <coughs> p there, and then what would you add there? What would we get negative 6 times, or 6 times something to get 15? Is 6 a factor of 15? No, you can't do 6 times something to get 15. That's not going to work. Is there something, basically something that's a factor of 6 and a factor of 15? What? It's 3? Put a 3 there? Can we fill this in so that when we distribute the 3, we get negative 6p plus 15? What would we put in here? The negative 2p? That would give us negative 6p when we distribute the 3. What, what else? Plus what? Plus 5? Now! Is 3 a factor of the numerator? It is because 3 times something, right? Now the something is, is kind of long, but it's in parentheses. It is one thing. It's grouped together by parentheses. 3 <coughs> times one more thing gives you, well, the numerator, right? So 3 is a factor of whatever the numerator turns out to be. And 3 is a factor of 6, so 3 cancels with the 6. We get negative 2p plus 5 over 2. Now if we try to cancel that 2 with that 2, that's going to be a problem because 2 is a factor of the denominator, but just saying 2 is a factor of, of this term does not mean it's a factor of the whole numerator. If we wanted to do that, we'd need to be able to do this thing again. We need to be able to write two outside some parentheses, fill in the parentheses, so that when you distribute it, uh, it comes out the same. It comes out the same as the numerator. Okay. And at least using integers, we can't do that. Okay. Um, well, I guess that means we're just going to get through 2.6. It's fine. Um, so remember that if want to simplify an expression like this. You want to simplify any fraction at all, you've got to have common factors. Factors meaning that you multiply by something else to get whatever the number is. Okay? You multiply by something else, strictly multiply, you're a factor. 